Good morning, Julia. Thanks very much. Um, it is really interesting um, when you when you look at some sort of you know older films, older TV shows, and you I mean, and you look at um, well how how people are portrayed, whether it's people smoking cigarettes, you know, with a cigarette almost in a child's face, whether it's sexism, you know, Benny Hill, for, you know, a Carry On type film, or ra blatant outside racism or language like that. It's amazing how much our expectations uh, have changed over the years. But the British Board of Film Classification basically want to, um, I suppose, limit exposure to some of the language which would perhaps have been deemed acceptable in the past. Do you think they're right? I think that they probably are right, to be honest. I think a lot of the pressure, actually, uh, from this study has come from parents. Um, and actually, a lot of parents are concerned about how children um, might imitate language that, that, that they see on street, out on screen, perhaps in the playground perhaps when they're playing with their friends. And they're actually, there are some parents that want to talk to their children about racism and, discriminating, uh, and discrimination and actually look to the BBFC ratings to help them do exactly that. Um, so I think what, what the BBFC has tried to do is put in place a set of guidelines for ratings, which take into account mitigating factors like documentaries and also historical content like you were just talking about, to try and help guide parents um, choose, when they're choosing the best content that they want their children to watch yeah. that's going to help them be the best adults that they, could, that they can be when they grow up. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I can understand that. I, I feel very strongly, I mean, as someone who, for instance, you know, I swear like a trooper in daily life, but I don't want to hear it on the radio, on the TV, and so I don't want my daughter uh, to hear it. Um, but again, we, we, we can still find words shocking. There are still words which do just make you go, oh, and, and when you are watching a historical film and they, they looked at certain films uh, like, you know, like, like Selma, like Hidden Figures, about, about racism, hearing that language, hearing, for instance, the N-word um, used, used with vitriol as well, used in an abusive way, it is shocking. But that's part of the film's content. That's the point of the film is to show what it was really like for black people at that time, in which case... You can't, you, sh you definitely shouldn't edit out that and you shouldn't limit who sees it because it's placed in context. No, I completely agree with that, Julia. I think it's very important that when we are teaching children and adults about what it was like for minority groups in the past, that the full truth is seen to people. And that includes the awful language which was used against them. Um, but actually, from what I understand, the report actually makes mitigations for that. Mm. Like if, if, if it is contextualised, then they would actually make mit mitigations for that. Yeah. So it doesn't seem to me like too much of a problem. It's very important, I think, as well, um, that we uphold this country's great um, tradition of freedom of speech and freedom of, yeah. of expression, and that art isn't stifled at all. That would be my primary concern about um, about racism. And that's like a difficulty. This. But then that's where you just want full information so you can know. And again, like, well, no, you can't go and see that film. It's an 18. You know, and, and here are the reasons why. I like it when a, a, it's something on Netflix or, or, or on the television, they just say, you know, this has got this rating, but there will be some, you know, sex scenes, there will be some violence, there will be some whatever. And then you know, you know whether you want to watch it or not. You get that information. Um, it does seem to me that perhaps a little bit strange that the British Board of Film Classification is going to be able to sort of control and advise who can see certain uh, films because of the, the, the racist language. And yet many, many young people, black, white, Asian and, and, and everything in between, are listening to rappers and grime artists who use the N word pretty much every other word and refer to women as uh, the word for female dogs and uh, and as prostitutes. I mean, this language and language about gay people as well, this language permeates popular culture almost entirely. Yes, Julia, I completely agree. And actually, when I was reading the report, I was thinking exactly just that. It's much easier for parents to pick which films their children watch, but much harder yeah. for them to help for them to choose which music they listen to, especially if they've got their own smartphones. Yeah. Um, so I think possibly maybe we need to look at how we can engage with companies like Spotify, companies like Apple Music to make their content more age appropriate or help parents choose or, ha or have more of a role in which music their children are listening yeah. to. Because ultimately, if it's just kind of censored for films, but not for music, it's not really solving the problem. Is yeah, it? indeed. Uh, Albi Amankona, thank you so much for joining us. Co-founders, Conservatives Against Racism for Equality Group.